go on to a more modern rhythm. So these rhythms we've, we've done here. Well, actually, I should, I should go back in the, the Casca to give you a, a kind of a cool thing to do. Because the, the timbales are two drums, right? The Casca is played on the side of one. We talked about that. And on the drum set, we've applied it here, 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 or here. But uh, a timbale player can play what they call double paila, the two, sh two shells. And basically, you've got the cascara pattern here. And there's a lot of holes within that pattern. And you can fill those holes up with the other hand. And you can get as busy or as simple as that. It's, I was just basically filling in what notes weren't being played. Uh, and that really lends itself uh, to a lot of uh, overplaying, and, but it's you know still a lot of fun to do. So you know I'll give you an A. You put put a little rudiments in there: um, five-stroke roll, six-stroke roll. in the right spot and you're, you're, you're understanding how it fits you know you're, f you're really free to play all of that all of that is, is very common to be put into the rhythm section so you've got that pattern uh, the left hand pattern lends itself to playing really cool ghost note pattern and so you can really play even just a funk thing you're, you, for those that don't even know any of the things I'm showing you, you, you can just show up and start playing a funk thing. assume it was some sort of David Garibaldi-esque type of funk thing. So I, I do that a lot on pop gigs or rock gigs or whatever as well, where you know I can fit that in, it's particularly if they have a percussionist that works for It's well. a big connection in the funk and the... Yeah, the yeah, the, the Cubans will tell you that, you know, particularly music from the 80s on is very, very funk-inspired in, in Cuban music. The, those guys, uh, you know, they, they were cut off um, from, from being able to go or to... to uh, to hear uh, a lot of the music, so all they heard was what was it, the Voice of America? Is that was a big radio station that was playing like, you know, the Beatles and mm -hmm. and rock music. That was really their only thing. So, music that came from the '80s on into Cuba is really kind of these like inverted um, forms of American pop music, where it still has clave, still has this uh, this this intrinsic Cuban feel to it. But it's modern music. It's played with amplifiers and guitars and drum set and all that. But it still maintains all of that uh, that that um, the rhythmic stuff. But it maintains this really American pop funk sensibility. You know, bass player was playing little slinky lines and stuff. And as a result of that, uh, some kind of new things changed. There's a, a, a very 
um, famous band called Los Van Van, which is basically translates to the Go-Go's. They formed um, a group, and they didn't have a bongo player, correct? So the drummer, a very famous drummer named Changuito, he kind of had to pick, he had to play the bell part uh, on his own. And, um, but he still wanted the, the, the propulsion you get from playing this rhythm. So he kind of adapted a two bell pattern. Uh, on one hand, he's still holding down this. But on his left hand, uh, he changed the original mambo pattern, which was this. And he came up with this pattern, put, put together. specific rhythm for the drum set, the first one really ever for the, particularly for the drum set, which uh, we call, which they call songo, right? And this is a rhythm that like in the, in the 80s, like Dave Weckl started using it on jazz records uh, and you started hearing um, this pattern. Nowadays people call, they, they call it the songo as if it's just a specific rhythm. It's really like saying this is the rock beat. Once you learn the pattern, you can't just play every song with that pattern. Same thing goes with the song book. M many of you might already know it. Um, it. The basic pattern goes like this. You're, you're playing the bongo bell, uh, but you're taking all the extraneous notes out. So you're just doing this. And you would play that on the hi-hat. And then you simplify this part to fit this. because you're really just playing half notes with your hi-hat. So the, uh, the snare drum part, again, it's clave conscious. So you're going to play one, two on the two side of the clave. It's less syncopated, so it's one, two. So I'm just repeating the two side here. On the three side, I'm going to put another note in there to make it a little more syncopated. One. So together, one, two. Still listens to that or not, but you hear him playing songo all over the place on that record. Uh, same thing with um, another uh, record, the Michelle Camilo Trio. If you're familiar with that, if you listen to jazz, the, the Joel, Joel Rosenblatt, the drummer on some of those records, they're all just playing songo. It works really well from swing to to uh, that rhythm for a Latin thing because. It's still like it's got this kind of a real solid propulsion to it. It works really well in a, in a jazz situation, even if you don't have a congo player. So if I was playing, and I wanted to go to a congo. Maybe be 
because it's not quite as uh, busy, it feels more natural uh, than to go into like the Cascara and all that in a, in a jazz situation. So you see a lot of a lot of guys nowadays go the songo for, for for Latin rhythms. I'm more familiar with the with the funk than with the one. Oh yeah, and it's highly adaptable with the, down with the funk beat, beats as well. Yeah. So if I'm playing just the regular. <laughs> There's a, uh, everybody knows YouTube nowadays, right? There's a, a, a group, uh, what's it, a website that used to be called gospelchops.com. Is anybody familiar with that website? Well, if you go to YouTube and you, and you put in uh, gospel chops, basically it started in the East Bay um, in San Francisco, in the East Bay, the Berkeley, Richmond, Albany area. Lots of uh, uh, Baptist churches in that area, and they all play. And some of these kids... Uh, are playing ridiculously well at, at eight, nine, by the time they get to be like 16 and 17. If you're familiar with uh, Thomas Pridgen, anybody know that guy? Yeah, he grew up out of that. He comes from the Richmond uh, Baptist Church background. And uh, they're just crazy, crazy, crazy busy players. That they get, you, If you watch some of their, their church services, they're like rock shows and the drummers are just great players. But a lot of their uh, playing is, is song influenced. You'll, you'll hear them. The, the way they're playing funk nowadays has got that kind of a half note of feel to it. So, um, so I would recommend checking that out. And again, I know I've gone through like a whole bunch of stuff, uh, and, and I'm not expecting anybody to like walk out knowing exactly, remembering everything. So, if you really liked what I was doing, then check out um, Frankie Malabe's book, uh, Afro Cuban book. Rhythms for the Drum Set. Yeah, so even Cubans that grew up with this music. I, I got the book. Yeah, I know, I'm just saying. Even, <laughs> even, even, uh, even he has it, so that, that, you know, that's going to tell you how, how great it is. Um, there's also um, another one uh, that I, I, I highly re recommend getting, and that's um, called Funkifying the Clave by Robbie Amin. It's got a bass player on it called Lincoln Goins as well. And uh, he takes these basic rhythms. Uh, you really should get the, the, the Afro-Cuban Rhythms for the Drum Set book first. Get the foundation, and then you go to the Funkifying the Clave, because it's really all about how you can take these rhythms and make them uh, more drum set specific.